uh, we are doing Guru Charitra, Chapter 1, Vision of Shri Guru Nath. Saraswati Gangadhar begins with invocation prayers for Divine Grace to endow on him merit and strength to be able to successfully compile the sacred Guru Charitra. The glorious account of the Divine Incarnation of Shri Lord Shri Dattatraya, that is Shri Sripad Shri Vallabh and Shri Narsimha Saraswati. Namdharak, an ardent devotee of Sri Narsimha Saraswati, set out for Gangapur for the darshan of the holy Padukas. Tired and exhausted, he fainted on the way. At this time, Guru Nath appeared before him in a dream and blessed him. Shri Guru Bhaya Nama, Shri Ganeshaya Namaha, Shri Saraswati Namaha, Shri Guru Dattatraya Namaha, Shri Mahalakshmiya Namaha, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Sri Guru Ve Namaha. Guru, the spiritual preceptor, is himself Lord Brahma, the creator of the cosmos. Guru himself is Lord Vishnu, the sustainer of the cosmos. Guru himself is Lord Maheshwar, who absorbs unto himself this creation at the end of each cycle. And verily, the Guru himself is absolute and supreme Godhead. And unto that Guru, I offer my total obeisance. To transcribe into finite language, in the confines of limited vocabulary, the infinite glory and effulgence of Guru Dattatraya, the unified manifestation of the Supreme Trinity, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh, is an impossible task for any. Even the Vedas failed and beat a retreat. And even so, if at least a small and a single ray of the supreme effulgence of the Godhead can be captured, that is enough to redeem the world. And through divine grace, the impossible becomes possible to some and to a little extent at least. Namdharak invokes for divine grace. Saraswati Gangadhar, that is Namdharak, the blessed devotee of Datta Avatar, Sri Narsimha Saraswati, before setting out to write the sacred Guru Charitra, invokes the grace of Lord Ganesh. Without Lord Ganesh's grace, nothing can be achieved. He is Mangal Murti, the embodiment of all the auspicious attributes and the abode of all auspiciousness. He is most easily pleased, responds instantaneously and bestows his grace even readily on whomsoever calls out to him. He makes the impossible possible. With his grace and help, Sage Vyas could compose the incomparable and monumental Mahabharata. Saraswati Gangadhar extols Lord Ganesha saying, You are the remover of all obstacles. You keep your large fan-like ears always waving. The air waves pro produced thereby drives away all the obstacles in the path of your devotees. In your stomach rests all the worlds and that is why you are extolled as Lambodara. Even all the gods have to worship you alone first before undertaking any of their divine tasks. I pray to you to bless this venture of mine and help me through. Next, Saraswati Gangadhar invokes the grace of Mother Saraswati, the bestower of all knowledge and wisdom. He prays, you are the mother of all the Vedas. Without your grace, man cannot pronounce even a syllable. You are the life force behind the sound. You are the indweller of the fourfold aspect of the sound, that is para, paschanti, madhyama and vaikari. From the subtlest to the grossest expression of sound, I beseech you to bless me and help me with the venture of mine. <coughs> oh, Tej is also joining. Is okay, no problem. <laughs> Saraswati Gangadhar next prays to Tirumutis and to Sri Dattatre. He prays, O oh Lord, you are the primeval gurus. You are the ones who incarnated in the Kali Yuga as Sri Narsimha Saraswati to redeem people from their ignorance and their ills. With full faith, you alone are going to steer me through the colossal venture. I am setting out upon this task. It is like the child trying to catch the moon by stretching out its hand. But even so, I have complete faith in you that you will help me through. The Saraswati Gangadhar starts with the divine narrative, the Guru Charitra. As a prelude, he gives a brief account of his lineage of, for his immediate forebears. He belongs to the Kondanya Gotra. He is the fourth generation of the line reckoning from Sayamdev. Sayamdev's son was Nagnath and Nagnath's son was Devrao. All of them were staunch devotees and worshippers of Gurunath. Sayamdev 
and Nagnath had the blessed privilege of being the close disciples of Guru Nanak and of serving the master in his lifetime. It is because of this merit earned by them that one among their family, Saraswati Gangadhar, to become an instrument of the Lord to write about the divine leelas of the great Dutta Avatar for the benefit of the humanity and the world. It should however be understood that a life of any great saint or master and much so of an avatar like that of Narsimha Saraswati is like a huge iceberg lying submerged in the frozen waters of the ocean and showing but a tiny crest of pinnacle afloat in the waters. What will be discernible to human eye is just a tiny portion afloat above the waters, but not the mountain-sized iceberg submerged under the waters. So also in the following account of Guru Nath's life, it is but a fraction of the glory that will be delineated. It is impossible for anyone to describe the avatar's full glory. He is a mystery beyond all human comprehension. Namdharak is blessed with Guru Darshan. There was once a devotee named Namdharak. We are beginning the stories. So in this, we have started with Namdharak. Namdharak was Basically, a fourth line devotee of the same, the one that we are going to talk about. There are two avatars of Dattatre that we are going to discuss in this book. And this is Narsimha Saraswati as we know. And here, the lineage of his forefathers is also mentioned. So that you get one, two, three, third, that is the fourth generation from his forefather. So, now we are going to beginning his, we are beginning his story. There was once a devotee named Namdharak and who had a great yearning to visit the holy place of Gangapur for the darshan of the sacred Guru Padukas, the Nirgun Paduka of Dattha Avatar Sri Narsimha Saraswati Dev, enshrined there. He heard much more authentic anecdotes, how Guru Nath continues to shower his grace on all seekers. Even after his Mahaprasthan and that a pilgrimage to Gangapur is sure to suit the mind, to satiate the yearning of the heart, to quench the thirst of the soul and to allay the hunger of the spirit for all the devotees. Now you will find that in these stories that we are going to be talking about, there will be an entry of a person who is going to recite these stories as if they are first hand. As if they are first hand means actually what happens is in most of the holy texts is the divine himself who comes and recites his own stories. But the form that appears in front of you will be slightly different. It will not look the same. So today in the morning when we were doing that one beautiful chapter, you will find that Jesus appears like a completely different person. He is dressed in the golden cloak and he is a very handsome looking person. He appears and then he tells his own story. So here also you will find that Dattha Avatar is going to appear as his own persona. But in uh, as a human form, it will be slightly different because first-hand knowledge is always coming from the right source. Understand this, that anybody in this world cannot tell the stories about the divine if they don't have the first-hand knowledge about it. So whether it is Sukhdev, now Sukhdev Goswami was the, was the disciple of his own father, that is Vyas Muni. And Vyas Dev, was an avatar of the Lord himself and Sukhdev came from the lineage of Brahmajis. Basically the lineage is there so it is at the end you will find that the Lord himself has taken the form to tell his own story. So everywhere it is going to be the same. So even in this book you will find that the stories will be conveyed to us through another person but who is also an avatar of the same. It is just as if somebody appears in somebody else's body to tell you the story. With great expectation and hope, Namdarak set out for his village of, of village to Gandhapur. The journey was long and arduous and he was very exhausted and had lost all his stamina. He had seized with despair as to whether he would survive and be able to reach the destination at all. Resting under a tree, Namdarak cried out in desperation, Oh Gurudev, don't you have pity and compassion on me? I may be unmerited with so many sin loads on my head. But what of it? Will a mother ever forsake her son, however bad and evil he may be? You know how devotedly my ancestors worshipped and served you. Because of that, at least, show me a little consideration, ignoring and forgiving all my lapses. If you forsake me, who can I look up to? Oh my Lord, I will end my life if you are so callous to me. 
wailing thus in anguish and in desperation and fatigued by the journey, he fainted and fell unconscious. Lo, no mother ever forsakes her child, even the cow comes seeking its calf. Namdharak had a wondrous dream. Guru Nath, Sri Narsimha Saraswati Dev stood in there before him, casting his benevolent look upon him and placing his hand on Namdharak's head as a token of the blessing. Namdharak's joy knew no bounds. He fell at Guru Nath's feet. He sang out long hymns of praise to the Lord. He offered mental worship to him. He collected the dust from under the feet of the Lord and smeared it on his own forehead and all over his body. He was overwhelmed with joy. Thus ends the first chapter of Sri Guru Charitra describing the dream vision vouchsafed to Namdharak by Sri Guru Nath. Glory be to all merciful, the omnipotent and the ever responsive Guru Nath. See, in this uh, you will find that most of the time the Lord himself appears. I will tell you one story about Swami Samarth Ramdas. Now Samarth Ramdas was a very very staunch believer of Sri Ram. Being an avatar of Hanuman. Hanuman doesn't believe in any other God except one. That is only Sri Ram. Even if any other God comes and says that I am Sri Ram, he will not believe him. So first he says you have to show me that you are Sri Ram, then only I will do whatever has to be done. So it so happens that many people come and tell Swami Samar that you should go to Pandarpur. Now Pandarpur is Vitoba's place. He says, I don't recognize Vitoba. Who is this Vitoba? I don't know him. If it is Sri Ram, then I will come over there. Otherwise, I don't want to come. So first time a group of devotees come and they console him and they say, come on, come on, let's go. He refuses to go. Then another group of devotees come immediately. Again he refuses to go. The third time a Brahman comes over there. And the Brahman comes over there and he tells him that, see, I heard that you are only a believer of Sri Ram. He says, yes. So he says, you know what, there is no difference between Sri Ram or Sri Krishna or Vitoba or anybody like that. That avatar over there in Pandarpur belongs to Sri Krishna. Okay, Krishna has taken a form over there and he is standing on one brick and he has put his hands at the side. He says, I don't give a damn about it. I want to see, see Sri Ram over there, otherwise I don't want to come. So he says, see, it is like this. Suppose if I have to tell you that I will show you that there is Sri Ram in that, will you come with me? So finally, after a lot of casualing, Swami Samad says, okay, if you don't prove it to me, you just see my wrath is very bad, you know, I will show you. So finally, Samarth Ramdas starts for Pandarpur. Now Pandarpur is a long, long way. Many a times, he never used to wear anything under his feet. Though his master, his, he was the guru of, of uh, Shivaji Maharaj, yet he never used to wear any. He was only wearing one copin. One, uh, one uh, you know, that you hold your hand on top of uh, that stick on which you give your uh, satsangs and all. Yes, and malas. And the next one was one kamandalu, that's all. And he would just keep on walking, 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 walking all the time. So he starts doing that. Suddenly he comes across a huge clump of trees. Now in that, you know, the babul babul, we call it it has got long pointed thorns. Now, this babul is that got uh, the black seeds which you can use it for removing a juice which is basically very poisonous but if we apply it on it's a type of uh, uh, you know thing which cures uh, different kinds of diseases. Okay, So, he, that particular thorn is there. The thorn goes in his feet. He is unable to walk. There are lots of thorns are there. This Brahman bends down and removes all his thorns, tears up his dhotar, dhotar means that, uh, that uh, thing which he used to wear and ties his leg up. Then he says, Ki, you know, you must be very tired, I will get you some food and he gets him some food, gets him some water, makes him drink all that. Suddenly, the Samarth looks at him and says, you are not a Brahman. 
Why would a Brahman touch my feet? Brahmans are greater than me. I come from a different Vanshach and you come from a different Vanshach. Why should you touch my feet? He says, no, 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 no. You see, all those katas had gone in your, all the thorns had gone in your feet, no? That's why I had to remove them. So he says, come on, come on, let's go now. And they come to that particular temple in front of the temple. He says, you do one thing, you wait over here. I mean, you all can go inside. He had to one barber called Dattu. He says, Swami Samartha and Dattu, you can go inside. You see, I just have to go and meet uh, my wife and come. She is on the other side of this temple, you know. I just go meet her and then I will come and then I will meet you near the main shrine. So at that time Swami Samar starts, he enters the gate. That is the gate which is there of Namdev. Okay, it's a very famous gate which you can enter over there. So once he enters the gate, he suddenly looks behind and there is nobody behind him. He says, oh, this must be Krishna himself. He is a crooked fellow. He just fooled me so that he could get me till here. <laughs> so finally, somehow you know, he starts walking up the stairs. There is a long pathway. And then what he does, there is a long distance viewing over there. And you can go close or you can go long distance. Two viewings are there. One far and one close by. Swami Samarth is still angry. He says, I don't want to see this fellow over there. I don't care any Vitoba or somebody like that. I will only see through that hole, you know, there is one tiny hole. I will only see through that and I will walk away from here. I don't even want to go inside. So what happens is, he goes near that, it's called the window. Just like you have window in uh, Urpi, no? As a Kankanadi, you know, that, uh, that thing. Like that, there is a very big window in front. So he stands over there and he watches. And what he watches over there is, yes, he watches that Vitoba suddenly raises his hand and in his hand he takes a Dhanushaman and he is shining with that armor of his and like Sri Ram. Everybody in the temple is afraid now. He says, what has this ever happened? Then suddenly Maharaj, you know, uh, Swami Samar, he starts running near the main shrine. He goes near the main shrine and bows down to Sri Ram over there. And he has a, a long darshan of his. Sri Ram blesses him over there. Everybody in that group is watching this show. And the God doesn't want to turn back into Krishna once again. So there is a very big problem. Suddenly now everybody is looking at Sri Ram. So they tell uh, Swami Samar, why don't you do some satsang in front over here only. And so Swami Samar then starts his satsang. And this satsang is a wonderful satsang, which uh, there are lots of poems that are being recited at that point in time, which are available in the, uh, which you can actually see it and uh, available on the internet also and so many beautiful songs he sings finally he requests the lord he says i understand now you are the same as krishna and everybody so please revert back to your original position so that others can have darshan and then he goes away from there now here why did i tell you this story you will find that for the sake of the devotee for the sake of the devotee, the Lord will be willing to do anything. He is willing to become the servant of that person as well. So he goes over there as a Brahman, even takes out the thorns from the feet, touches the feet, washes his feet, does everything to his greatest devotee. He is an avatar of Hanuman, no doubt about it. But the Lord himself is capable of doing all these things. So here, when Nam Dharat is asking the Divine Lord, can you not take pity on me? See, I am a poor soul. I have walked so many miles. So can you not take pity on me and show me your darshan so that I am able to, you know, get out of this life, you know, this mukti of, from this particular life. And so he gets this particular dream where he meets Sri Narasimha Saraswati and then after he meets him, he gets that particular release. 
Now in the next chapter we will see how Ramdharat meets Siddha Yogi. Siddha Yogi is one of the avatars of the same lineage as Dathatra himself. So you will find that though it's a disciple of the same Guru, yet it's one of the avatars of his. And then how he tells him the stories one after the other. So what we will do is we will stop over here today. It's just half an hour. But uh, I think we can definitely, you know, this is the first day. So we can stop over here and if you have any questions, you can ask me.